it's me, the motorcycle, and the cast. I can go on rides and just put on a commentary that I did before, figure out where I want to improve on that. If there's nothing else to distract me unless somebody pulls out in front of me. Growing up in upstate New York, I was a very active child. You might say a little hyperactive. I was always into sports, always into video games from the beginning. I always say that I was born with a soccer ball and a game controller in my hand. I started working at a grocery store when I was 15. I went on till 25 doing that, stocking yogurt, working registers, pushing carts outside, but knowing that I couldn't instantly grasp onto the goal that I wanted, I had to pursue gaming. The casting wasn't all that, you know, heavy in the, in the beginning. It was very far and few between. Traveling to New York City, maybe every four or five months, there'd be like uh, tournaments around April Fools and then around the holidays. So it was actually a pretty big struggle in the beginning to get things going. But I wouldn't think to myself like, man, that was really great. I'm never gonna do that again. It's like, no, I'm gonna stock the hell out of this yogurt until I can get another chance to go back out there and commentate. I knew it was the dream that I wanted to pursue, no matter how much stress it caused me at the time, no matter really what I had to go through, because every instance that I got to go and cast, even at my computer screen, sitting in my boxers, casting to people for a tournament somewhere around the world, the feeling that you get is so euphoric that you can relate with people on a Baron steel, on a, a three-person sight take headshot, all of those things that people grasp onto and can relate in a game is what drove me. Whether I had zero dollars in the bank, one penny in my hand, or a million dollars, I still wanted to achieve that every day. It's an adrenaline rush. I was casting just pretty much Counter-Strike and shooters. Shout casting wasn't a real thing. It was kind of just coming up. I feel like I was really, really, really lucky to get the chance to kind of be thrown into the deep end immediately. Going to Nokia Theater in 2005, and MTV and Spike TV were there casting, and I was like, I am out of my league. What's going on here? That's when a friend at Riot Games had said, hey, you should come work for us and do some player support. And I thought about it, I was like, man, player support? I'm going backwards. That's not what I want to do. And I was like, no, that's exactly what I want to do. It only took four months into being at Riot, where I remember Freak and I would do kind of like patch previews at four in the morning. We were doing a brand patch, patch preview when we brought him out. While you're doing some player support ticket, you would just see random crap, where you hear Freak be like, Arcane Shift, and he'd jump across the room. We did some pretty random crap in the beginning. It was, it's always been an amazing atmosphere at Riot. You realize that you do need pants today, right? Yeah, Okay. I'll change after Look at this too. You're gonna change in between games? Tamit comes up behind me and he goes, hey, do you wanna go to DreamHack and cast with Freak? And at this point, DreamHack was literally what I had wanted to do for my entire life. I realized that my dream had absolutely come true. I was going to be able to not have to work a day in my life because I did something I loved, but also work as hard as I can at that because it doesn't feel like work. Gentlemen, morning. C drive, Sidewinder, Parallel, Convergence. We need to talk to the champion creators and be like, make easy to commentate skill names. <laughs> Almost time to get ready for the show. Everybody's lined up outside. Gotta get changed, get ready. So what are your thoughts on Echo? TF against them is really good. I imagine he would be. TF just gold card all day. So I don't think makeup ever, ever bothered me. That's at least okay. Because I had two sisters that would do this. So, so, never a problem. Do I make the, the little part shorter or the other part longer? You would think after like a year we know a how to do this. little part shorter. Just about 40 minutes before we all go live, I get to hang out for a while. So what I'm gonna do is make sure everybody's got their stats, make sure everybody has, you know, water, Red Bull. All right, so who do we think could be random picks today? But to have the guys that we have now, they're so dedicated and passionate. Being around people that love to do what you love to do all day just drives you to do it more. The thing I didn't notice the first time I watched it is he swept the brush. So oh, he, they blocked, could not he blocked the vision, so Kid had to face check. He's not gonna get the third. Oh, he runs, he runs. <laughs> Way of the Wanderer, baby. Sick duel. 
You have a lot more people that are writers, the producers, the directors that know how things go. Things have just become so advanced that we can really focus on the game. Man, that sounds really choppy. Sushi, another chance to be successful one. What is late by? Gonna start heading up. Crowd seems pretty pumped. We just had an amazing game going on. So let's get the casting. It's not going to happen. They are methodically and surgically removing gravity from the map one by one as they do the same with their turrets. All tech is just forced to watch. Thank you, gentlemen. CLG there dismantling gravity. There's nothing I want more than to continue to cast, watch Riot grow. Being somebody that was there from such an early, early position and in Riot's infancy in League of Legends, it feels like, you know, I grew up with that. And that's not something you can let go. You know, you kind of got to see that through to the end. And the end isn't anywhere near right now. Like I said, heat seeking coming up and they are methodically and surgically removed.